to you all. So, I guess y'all know what this upload is going to be about based on the title. Um, when I first got saved, a lot of people were, were really trying to get me to go to church as if, um, like my life and salvation depended on it. They were always emphasizing, well, you don't go to church. You need to go to church, go to church. And, and I'm not saying that people cannot go to church. So I don't want anyone to think that this is, uh, me saying anything about going to church churches because there are some great churches. There really are. And then there's others that need a little bit of improvement. Okay. And, and the point of me making this upload is that people are so focused on just going to church, the aspect of, of being there as if God is only at church on Sundays. And that's the only place you're going to find him. And so I wanted to read a passage from Acts 48. And, um, and then I want to continue on with my message. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all these things? So, and I think it really is nice to go to church and get your fellowship. And uh, like I said, there are some really good churches. And, um, you know, but I, I want to let people know that they don't have to go to church to get saved. You can get saved wherever you are. You can be in your room. And that's that's where I got saved. I got on my knees in my room. And I uh, asked the Lord to be in my life. And I got reborn again right at my house here. And, um, and I want you all to know that that relationship with God is every day, all day. And you don't have to go to church for it or to get saved. Um, and a lot of people are going to make you feel like that. And that, um, and then, you know, I, and I have to admit that I am a little bit jaded on some of these churches because I don't know if all you guys have looked at all my uploads for, so for some of you all who missed what I have mentioned in previous uploads, um, my adopted mother's fourth husband was a pastor. Now, he didn't necessarily pastor at church. He he did it in our home, but then sometimes we would go off to church. And, um, you know, I always asked him. I, I always asked him because he would always try and drag me to church. And I really, you know, I didn't want to go. And I would always ask him, well, why can't God be here? Why is he not? Why can't he be here where I'm at? And, um, and even though I had a good point there, um, I really just didn't want to go to church. Um, and it's because I didn't know God. I didn't have a relationship with God. And then the people that I saw that supposedly had a relationship with God, I didn't see God on them. And even though he was a pastor, he, you know, I saw him all the time. I lived with him. He was my stepfather and I, and I'm not saying he was like this bad, bad person. I'm just, I'm just saying that I didn't see enough of God on him that makes me want to, to give my life to him. And, and like I said, he didn't tell me to get reborn again. He didn't tell me about lying and cheating and adultery. And he didn't, he didn't tell me anything about anything. And he, I just was just let out to do whatever and, and to learn on my own. And, you know, and I was adopted by these, by white people. And I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. It's just that they adopted me for the wrong reasons. I don't even know why they adopted me. They just, I think they just wanted to be different. And then they, after that wore off, uh, you know, well, actually, I think it's actually more than that. That might be for another upload because I don't want to deviate too much off of the, the topic. But anyway, my adopted mother was a, well, she was Jewish before she met my my her fourth husband who was a pastor. But anyway, um 
you know, I, I, I didn't see it on him. And then another thing, there's this guy who was uh, my counselor at high school. And he also was a pastor too. And so when I graduated, he continued on having like a, uh, a I'm not going to say a relationship with me, but he can, we stayed in communication and he invited me out to lunch. And at this restaurant, they had like a lake in the back where it had like a dock. So I'm thinking that the lunch is innocent, that he just wants to, since he was a counselor at my school and he was a pastor, that he just wants to continue on that communication. And I, I didn't think anything of it. And, and even though I was like 18 and he was like in his thirties, um, I was operating probably on a 10 or 12 year old emotional level because like I said, my parents didn't tell me anything about anything. And people saw me coming a mile away because it was very obvious that I was clueless. And um, so when we were walking on the dock, he's holding my hand. And I was so uncomfortable, but he was holding my hand and I was scared. I was scared to take my hand out of his hand and he was married and uh, and so I didn't know how to react and because uh, he was so much older than me and because he was a pastor and because he was a counselor so it was very very uncomfortable so it's just and, and then of course y'all know about the one that uh I, I supposedly got saved and they, he told me that snake story and didn't tell me anything about living differently or anything about my sins so so, you know, I am kind of jaded and I will admit that, but that's not to say there's not good churches out there. And, um, and, and I, I just, I just feel like so many people just think that God just lives at their church and it, it, it's almost like, like, uh, uh, it's almost like, okay, God, you know, we'll, we'll see you next Sunday, you know, and, and I'll, I'll talk to these clients and, 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 and I'll know that they go to church every Sunday. So I'm thinking, okay, well, they love the Lord. So, of course, we talk about everything else under the sun. Why can't we talk about how great God is? And you can tell that they, like, shut down. It's almost like, like you can tell what they're thinking. They're like, it's almost like they're like, oh, is it, is it Sunday? Already? It's, it, it, I thought it was Tuesday. It's almost like we can't talk about God unless it's Sunday at the 1030 service. And, um, but yet they can talk to me about their husbands, their wives, their vacations, their jobs, their schools, their sons, their daughters. They can talk about everything. But if, when I mention God, it's almost like they, you know, that, that, that's like, oh, you know, okay. You know, they don't want to talk about it. And it, it shows. So, uh, and I bet they wait until Sunday to pray too. I bet most of them do. And, and I, and it's just very disheartening, heartening because it happens so frequently. But there's a lot of people that go to church that really love the Lord and, and they will tell you the same thing I am. But I just want to give this message for anyone who is thinking about getting saved. You don't have to wait until Sunday to be reborn again in Jesus Christ. You can do it right now, right where you are and give your life to him. And he will welcome you. I don't care where you are. He will he will make changes in you where you are, okay? And and God is only at church because we're there. And if he's not there at church, if, if we're not there at church, he's not there sitting, just waiting, waiting for next Sunday. He's, he's not going to really be there like that if nobody's there. He's only there because you're there at church, okay? So wherever you are and wherever you're trying to, to have that relationship with God, God is going to be right there. Um, so we don't have to lock God in at church because that's not his address. Okay, so um, God bless you all and thank you so much for listening and I love you all so very much.